Let's get real. You watch almost every single video on project ideas out there and still clicked on this video because they are all garbage. You already know that you can make an e-commerce website or breast cancer detection algorithm. And personally, it's a massive insult to this vast field of computer science. So for this video, I've set up three criteria points. A project must be unique and entertaining to build, teaches new aspects of computer science, and make recruiters come. I'll guide you through the exact roadmap and tools you need to build them. And although this video is for intermediate coders, beginners can totally hop in and realize their true potential. And just one last thing, we'll go from easier to harder and just to keep you on toes, I've hidden some spicy bonus projects randomly along the way. Ready? Let's get started with my favorite project, Netflix Clone. Nah, no, just kidding. We are here to destroy the Matrix. Live DDoS Attack Map. Every second on this planet, hundreds of DDoS attacks erupt across the globe. You can monitor them, like literally see them happening in real time. If you periodically fetch traffic trends and attack spikes from Cloudflare and or IPs from Abuse IPDP, classify IPs with high DDoS confidence score using machine learning, load IPs to coordinates and then showcase them using Estonity's globe. And for backend, Fast API is a no-brainer. At number two, we have a solution against the worldwide loneliness pandemic crisis that is currently going on. It's a free app that lets local users find a place and time to hang out. But it's not as simple as it sounds. An 80 plus year ongoing study at Howard shows that real world friendships are the number one predictor of long-term happiness and mental well-being. Now imagine this. Users can instantly see near by hotspots where people are planning to hang out, cafes, events, and games near them. They can jump into real-time chat rooms to coordinate meetups and maybe even add friends and earn trust points over time adding another layer of complexity. Plus to prevent scams you'll begin serious user verification measures, language filters and a report user option. And here's a fun bonus, every city gets its own local forum. My recommended tech stack would be React Native, Go, DocumentDB, Redis, EC2 or Lambda as it would be highly scalable. But why would I go watch a movie when I can see them on my TV? Oh wait the next season is not available in my country and there's now ads even on paid subscriptions. So why not make a network wide ad block plus VPN for your entire home. First, check if your Wi-Fi router can be flashed with OpenWRT or DDWRT firmware. If not, get a Raspberry Pi gateway, use Pi-hole or AdGuard home for ad blocking and open VPN or WireGuard client for VPN connectivity. But an even better option will be to use a spare laptop. After installing a Debian based distro, your favorite VPN and ad blocker, connect your laptop's Ethernet to the main router and create a Wi-Fi hotspot from your laptop. And guess what? Somewhere in this list, we have more Linux and Raspberry projects that will take this setup to the next level. But there are a ton of cool projects you can create just using web technologies such as a Shazam clone. This 23-year-old technology is just a fingerprint database for songs. It's the perfect crossover for math, signal processing and web dev. And trust me, Demoing this will impress. If you're interested in computer meets music field, this is a fantastic startup project. And until we get to more projects for audiophile, let's finish web dev first. You see, I live in India, a country caused with many things, and one of them is Exynos chip. And for some goddamn reason, Google Maps is really slow on my 3-year-old A33. And even if it works, it's so hard to figure out if I have to go over flyover or not. It has become very clunky and unintuitive. So the idea is to create a very minimal, lightweight and light speed navigation app devoid of any bloatware. Just enter your destination and hit go. Either go with Jetpack Compose plus Swift UI or just use React Native. Now I haven't aggressively researched this niche but OpenStreetMap seems to be the most popular library for this task. However, Tegola, a vector tile server written in Go, might be more suitable for our use case. For routing, you can either go completely local first which will be lightning fast and work in remote or low connectivity areas. The downside is that app size will increase and you will still need a server to send traffic data to users if Devices. So instead, you can set up a completely separate routing server on your own, like OSRM, a high-performance routing engine designed specifically for OpenStreetMap. You'll have to poll every few seconds for significant changes and locally cache recently accessed routes for up to 15 days. Accessibility is also a very important factor for this product in my opinion. Finally, in WebDev, we have a neural network that learns to play your game. Make a game, then build an AI to beat it. Use JS Canvas to build a basic game. Train a neural network that controls the player using simple inputs. Watch your bot evolve and destroy your high score. Watch your bot evolve and destroy your high score. If you're familiar with JavaScript and neural networks, this shouldn't be too hard. There's a wonderful video from Radu implementing this using a car game completely from scratch. This project was also in my resume when I landed an internship at a Fortune 50 company. You can do a card game, a PvP, a race game, the possibilities are endless. To take this to another league, train this agent with reinforcement learning using Pygame or OpenAI agent. The possibilities are endless. And next we have our first bonus project. So these bonus projects might not fulfill one of the criteria we said before, but they are still very much worth it. No one be nuts. From the best. Whether you're doing web dev, building local applications, or even doing data analytics,
analytics, Linux will come up everywhere. And I'm not even talking about learning it, but experiencing the power of great Sigma Tux. You'll learn what operating systems really are, bash scripting, rising that five times in a row, package managers, remote access, networking, but most importantly, rising. Rise your desktop environment, your VS Code, Taskbar, Spotify, Discord, and even more. You can literally create your own desktop environment, packages, or a Linux distribution if you are brave enough. Lowell programming has been blowing up on the internet recently because of the insane challenges it imposes on you and the wisdom it offers. To start, you can create your own transpiler that converts a toy language into Python. You learn about lexors, parsers, abstract syntax trees, and code generation. Your toy language can look something like this. Then create a tokenizer in Python that uses rejects to break your input into tokens. Write a parser to turn tokens into an ASC and finally a code generator that parses the ASC to generate Python code. This is a very boiled down and simple transpiler and there is no ceiling for how complex you can go with it. The GNU compiler collection is estimated to be around 15 million lines of code. Oh hey look we have another bonus project! If you hate studying for your college exams, you can use ChatGPT inside your calculator. And you won't believe how easy it is. You just sneak an ESP32 inside your calculator right through your keyboard which allows connection to a server. Server talks to ChatGPT and it back to the server which sends it back to the calculator as a response. And by the way, I have created this video because our bro Tron got really bored and requested it. If you have any other requests or just wanna hang out and chat with me, you are most welcome to join my server. So this next project is something that every programmer must try at least once in their life. A self-hosted personal cloud storage. Now you can pay Google $10 every month for 1TB of storage or you can set up a spare laptop you have lying around, install Ubuntu server, run this bash strip, create an admin account, unlock terabytes of storage for free, well assuming you have a spare laptop though. If not, you can purchase a $50 Raspberry Pi to do this. You learn about port forwarding, TLS, backups and remote access. Talking about Raspberry Pi, you can also create your own Alexa. You'll have a micro microphone to listen to a vague word like hey man there or hey alexa it'll have a voice command recognition it can play music with a speaker it hit you news weather and even dark jokes imagination is your ceiling here and it'll only cost you roughly around 50 to 80 dollars and 100 pounds of serotonin but if you're looking for more hardcore exercise an algorithm visualizer sandbox might be it let's just say it is as hard as impressive it looks for creating an interactive playground you'll need canvas or svg for visuals this website will have parameters to change animation speed, jumble numbers, change graph size, and select vertex. But it's safe to say you won't need another project in your resume after building this. I'll link a YouTube playlist at top right over here that covers the basics of this project. Next we have a portfolio website. But not just any portfolio website, your portfolio website. Make something that doesn't just showcase your skills, but resonates with your personality. It's a great way to brag about your skills. My portfolio website is a retro video game themed desktop OS. To print some ideas, visit Pinterest, Dribble, Behance, Awards, Webflow, or just watch YouTubers roasting them. You'll collect inspirations in a Figma page and create an original representation of your artistic self. You might even surprise what you can come up with. My friend's portfolio is literally a terminal command, inside which you can navigate and explore more using web motions. Speaking of which, making a terminal game base has been a long time goal of mine. There's something incredibly satisfying about pushing the boundaries of what a terminal should be able to do. No fancy graphic libraries, no drag and drop physics engine, just pure logic, clever rendering, and a whole lot of characters. Literally. This project forces you to think like a game engine. You can make a race game, a dungeon crawler, a battle arena, or even a chess engine. You'll have to handle real-time input without waiting for the enter key, update screen frame by frame using loops and timers, some UI tricks like clearing the screen, cursor movements and colors, and core logic design like state machines, event systems, and game loops. And yes, you will touch concepts like IO buffering, threading, and memory management, depending depending on how deep you go. Language? Python is fastest to prototype, C++ will give you power and pain, Rust will make you question everything, in a good way. The projects I'm going to mention now are absolutely crazy ones. If you cook up even one of these projects, you officially don't need to write another line of code. You are a certified legend. But before that, now that we have talked a ton about libraries like cursors, PyHole, YTDLP, Tegola, etc. As a bonus project idea, you can literally choose any of these libraries and recreate it. And if that's too 
too much of a hassle, you can become a contributor to them. This is the best way to learn how these libraries work internally, how they keep their code maintainable and scalable by following general guidelines and eventually even become an active maintainer of that project. So now let's enter the final section of this video. Now as a music producer myself, I want to combine my domain knowledge into AI ML and create a music recommendation engine that clusters songs based on the inherent features of the song. These are scales, chord progressions, BPM, the type of kick you use, reverb on DLN vocals, drum beat type, bass, type of guitar, etc. These are the inherent features of what makes modern songs different from each other. Because let's be honest, popularity and song quality has no correlation. This is quite a hard task because you'll need several algorithms to extract a cappella, kick, separate instruments like bass and guitar from each other and really reverse engineer the instruments used in the song. But this will unarguably make one of the best music recommendation algorithms out there. A very unique one in fact. Uh. As a bonus, you can also build an interactive 2D map where every song floats near its sonic cousins. The last project for audiophiles is a crazy one. A domain specific language where you can write music like code and it plays in real time similar to how animations play out using code. Or maybe just a python library for making music. You'll make functions to import sample files, synthesize sounds, add sounds on a common timeline, add and configure custom plugins on each track, a complete music composition framework. And as a bonus, you can give it a UI and launch it as a free and open source DAW. Now for the boss battle. If music doesn't charm you, you can write a shader language compiler instead. You've seen those insane real-time shader animations that look like galaxy exploding inside a water droplet. They run on GLSL or SPRV, shader languages that GPUs understand. Now what if you build your own HLSL-like language that compiles to GLSL or SPRV? A small compiler that passes your new syntax and transpiles it into GLSL. You'll gain deep understanding of GPU sharing pipelines and WebGL or Vulkan basics for rendering your output. This isn't an intermediate project. And let's be honest, a lot of these projects in this list were not. But if you can pull this off, even a prototype, graphic companies will notice you. Because writing a shader is cool, but writing a shader language? That's epic. If you made it this far, you have zero excuses to be bored again. These aren't tutorial copy paste projects. These are challenges, opportunities, flexes. Pick one, build it, learn hard, show off, join our server, show it off there. And anyways, thanks a lot for watching this far. Only 20% or so people make it this far. So congratulations, you're in that group.